So we're going to focus in this plenary on one basic systems thinking tool. It's called the iceberg. And what do we know about icebergs? There's the tip of the iceberg, which is obvious. And for those of you who go back a long time to a cigar commercial, there is the bottom of the iceberg. And as someone once said, that's what's going to get you. We need to understand and not just be drawn to the tips of the icebergs that we encounter, but to actually gain a deeper understanding of what produces and what is underneath the icebergs that are right in front of us. The iceberg is a tool for deepening our understanding of complex problems. And it starts with understanding or just seeing the tip of the iceberg, which are the events, the individual famine that we're trying to help with, the dramatic spike in, uh, in a crime wave, for example. The problem with dealing with things at the event level is the best we can do is to react or firefight. And I know lots of organizations I work with where people pride themselves on being very committed because they're so good at fighting fires. If we were to step back, and by the way, 95% of what we read in the newspaper is events. We're conditioned to be startled by and react to events. When we step back from those events, we may recognize that those individual events are not isolated phenomena, but they're actually part of an ongoing trend, something that is unfolding over a period of time. And if we can understand that trend, then we have some new responses available to us. We can anticipate or forecast what's going to happen to that trend in the future and try to position ourselves accordingly. However, one, the trend may not continue into the future the way we think it will and the way it has unfolded so far, in which case our forecast can be very wrong. Or if we do see a trend and we're actually able to predict that yes, things are going to get worse and worse over time, that's not very reassuring either. We'd actually like to be able to change the trend. But in order to change the trend, we need to understand why that trend exists at all. And that's where we come to the bottom of the iceberg, which it's a little bit of an awkward term we call structure or systems structure. The forces and pressures at play. And there are different ways of describing this structure. And you'll be having some, uh, an example, by the way, we'll walk all the way through this iceberg with an example in more detail. First is by understanding the dominoes that perpetuate the problem. Taking a look at the problem, how we intervene to deal with that problem, and then what are the unintended or delayed consequences that can often make the problem worse or neutralize the benefits of our short-term gains. Underneath that, we can look at the underlying assumptions the structures, the wiring between our ears that leads us to often react and respond in the ways that we do. And underneath that, the underlying purpose. To go from the system is actually working very well to achieve something, to being much more explicit about the purpose that we want that system to accomplish and the extent to which that may be different from what is currently being accomplished. The benefit of understanding at this more root cause level, 
the structural level is that our capacity for leverage increases because it is the underlying structure that is producing the trends and patterns, which is producing the events. And if we want to change those trends and patterns and events in the future, we need to understand and redesign the structures that are producing them. So even though this may sound like an academic set of distinctions, our capacity to leverage our resources on behalf of the people we want to serve increases as we gain a deeper understanding, literally deeper understanding, of why those problems have persisted. Finally, each of those levels responds well to a different kind of question. So at the events level, we want to know what happened. Just the facts, Bam. What happened? At the trend and pattern level, we want to know what has been happening over time. And finally, at the structural level, we want to understand why. Why does this problem persist, often despite our best efforts to solve it? 